So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the current in a wire produces a magnetic field. Be able to draw the magnetic field around the current current wire, and for an extra challenge, be able to work out its direction. State what a solenoid is, and be able to draw the magnetic field around a solenoid, including its direction. And also, you'll be able to state how to change the solenoid into an electromagnet. And finally, you should be able to state three ways to make an electromagnet stronger. So firstly, let's go back to a starter, which links into last lesson, looking at magnetism. Pause the video, have a go at these. I'll go through it in a minute. So you could have had iron, nickel, or cobalt, and of course steel is also a magnetic material. It's not an element, it's called an alloy because it contains iron and carbon. Secondly, remember magnetic fields around a bar magnet. Magnetic fields come out of the north and into the south. What's the difference between a permanent magnet and a magnetic material? Well, a permanent magnet always has a magnetic field, whereas a magnetic material will only have a magnetic field when you put a magnet onto it, so it induces magnetism into it. So finally, the last thing, why is the Earth's North Pole magnetic south? Well, it was called the North Pole because the compass, the north of the compass, pointed to it. So everyone said, oh, that's the North Pole. But we call that the geographical north, because actually the reason why the compass actually points that way is because the Earth has its own magnetic field. And you'll notice that the red lines on the compass point towards the top, which must be the magnetic south, in order for the compass to point that way, the North Pole to point that way. So the answer is because the North Pole of a compass points to it, so it must be the magnetic south pole as North and South Poles attract. So how much can we produce a magnetic field? Well, we can use current to produce a magnetic field. Watch this video and you'll see how. So what we can do in this short video is to look at electromagnetism and to look at how current can produce a magnetic field and what the shape of the magnetic field is. So I've got just compasses here, and remember compasses will show the direction in which the field is traveling. And at the minute, I've got no magnetic field around here because I've got no current flowing through this wire. So you notice that all pointing north to south. Without a magnetic field due to electricity, the compasses will always point north to south. And what I'm gonna now do is put current through. I'm going to put the current so it's flowing through here, up this wire here, and then down the wire the other side. So you can see the current is flowing down like that, and I've put an arrow on it. Now, when I turn the current on, you'll see that we've now got evidence of a magnetic field. And actually, the shape of the magnetic field, if you look at the way that needles are pointing, they're pointing nearly in a circle around here. So it's a circular shape. Now, if I move the needles away, eventually the needles will line up along the magnetic field of the Earth again because the magnetic field strength due to the magnetic field here gets weaker and weaker and weaker until the Earth's magnetic field overtakes. So it's only when I get close does the magnetic field due to the current have an effect on that compass. So what we need to do is be able to know how to draw this in a diagram. The first thing to think about is this. We've got a wire going straight down in our page like this, and the current is going that way. So here is our wire in the center there, and we've got to show which way the current goes. Now, if you fire an arrow and it's going away from you like that, then you see the cross of the arrow going away from you. If the current is going towards you, you see the point of the arrow and you run. So a cross here shows with that wire there, current is actually going down that wire and away. And to draw the magnetic field, we first of all can see it's circular. So we draw like that. And we can also see that it's pointing this way. Now, another way to work that out is to think of a corkscrew or a bottle top. To put it in, you're doing that way. Another way to do it is to use the right hand thumb rule 
you can see if I point my thumb down, you can see that my fingers are coiled like that, which is the same as a direction of the magnetic field. So that's another way of working out the direction. Now we've got to show that the magnetic field is getting weaker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw three more lines. The next one I've got to draw here. And don't worry if it's not totally circular on your exam paper, but notice we've got to show the magnetic field is getting weaker. So my final line is going to be quite a bit further out than the other two to show that it's getting weaker. Don't forget, if I was to put a compass here, it would point that way. If I was to put a compass here, it would point that way. What we can now do is see what happens if we change the current around. So what I'm now gonna do is turn this off for a minute and then you'll see that they all start to line up again along the magnetic field of the Earth. So if I swap these round, so that the current is going in that way and up there and down, look what happens now. You can see we've got the circular field again going round, but this time the magnetic field, instead of going this way, is going the other way. So how do I draw it differently? Well, first of all, this time I've got the current coming up. So that's the tip of the arrow coming up towards you. And again, I'm gonna make this one small to show how to do it in an exam paper. So which way is it pointing? Well, the current is pointing up, so the right-hand rule, I've got my thumb going up and I've got my fingers cold that way, so the magnetic field this time is going that way, as you can see there, the opposite way. I'm then gonna draw another magnetic field line, circular, and to show that it's getting weaker, I've got to draw the third one further away than the gap between the other two to show that it's getting weaker. And that will give me three marks in an exam. Don't forget, of course, we can also see a magnetic field using iron findings. And you can just about see the circular lines of the magnetic field around the wire. So just to recap from that video, we know that current flowing through a wire produces a magnetic field it consists of circles, and they're called concentric circles, which means they have a common centre. They're all centred around this point here. When the current goes up, if you use your right-hand thumb grip rule, you'll know the current flows that way around because that is the way your fingers are gripped. And if you look here, when you draw it, you've got to make sure that those lines, those concentric lines, are getting further apart to show it's getting weaker. And this is what I was trying to show with the iron findings, very difficult to show, but you can see with the iron findings, they line up in concentric circles. And of course, if the current goes the other way, then you draw a diagram like this, where that is the wire, and the current's going away from you. You've got concentric circles, but it's switched direction. And if you look at your right-hand grip rule, putting your thumb that way, you will see that they go the other way. What I'd like to do before we move on is pause the video, Think what you put in each of these gaps and have a go at quickly sketching those two. So we have, when a current flows through a wire, a magnetic field is created around it. The field consists of concentric circles which get further apart as you move away from the wire. This is because the magnetic field gets weaker. You can use the right hand grip rule to determine the direction of the field. And if you've drawn these correctly, the current is going up here, so your thumb is pointing up, which means your circles are going that way around. And this one is going down, so the direction is in the opposite direction, and you should have made sure that these concentric circles get further apart. And finally, you can reverse direction the magnetic field by reversing the current. So now we've created this magnetic field, will it pick up a paper clip? So the question is, with a magnetic field around here, as proven there is a magnetic field around here, you can see it's circular going round. Is it strong enough to pick up any paper clips? Well, the answer is no, and those are steel ma a magnetic material. So therefore, this isn't strong enough to be an electromagnet. So how can we make it stronger? Well, what we can do, instead of having a single wire, we can coil the wire around like this, making what's called a solenoid. 
so you call those around. So let's have a look what effect that has on the magnetic field and the strength. So I'm first going to use iron filings to have a look at the magnetic field pattern that is produced by this solenoid. Now if I tap it and I bring it a bit closer, you can clearly see that we have this pattern. You can see that it's straight in between here and that's actually a uniform field. Uniform means it's a constant strength field all the way here. And you see at the edges, it's curling out like that and curling out like that and the same at this end. So it's, it curls out, it gets weak as it moves further away. And actually this field is just like a bar magnet. It comes round like that and back again. But I can't prove that with iron filings because the field's too weak here. So what I'm gonna do now is show you what it looks like using a compass instead. So if I range the compass needle there, you can see it's pointing just north to south. Turn the current on and you can see we've got a strong magnetic field and the magnetic field is pointing that way. And when the compass settles down, I'll show you can you see how it's the field lines are going straight that way all the way through and there as well and here as well. But notice what happens as I move out. If I come round to here, they move further away and look what happens. They go all the way around and back in the other way. Now, of course, if I turn the current around, swap these links over, you should find that the magnetic field goes in the opposite direction. So you can see now the magnetic field is on this side and it's coming out of this end, which means that's the north. And watch carefully, just like the bar magnet, those magnetic fields go all the way around and back into the south like this. Okay. So this is how we draw the magnetic field of a solenoid in an exam. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to draw this one like that. So you would get the picture of the solenoid you'll probably not have to draw that, you'd have to draw the magnetic field because it takes a bit of skill to draw the solenoid itself. So here is our solenoid, which is our coil of wire. And you don't have to be able to work out in an exam which is north or south, so they, so they would label it. So this must be our north because magnetic fields come out of north. So they would label that the north and that the south, and you would have to put the magnetic field on. Now to do this, this is the best technique. You must make sure that you've got a uniform field in the middle. So my suggestion is you just do a line going straight through all the way there. Then you do another one about there, another one about there, and one about there, and one about there to show it's uniform. Now, of course, it spreads out here just like a bar magnet. So I'm just gonna extend that like that and extend this one like that. And finally, this one would go all the way around and back again. And this one would go all the way around and back again. So that's how you draw it. And of course, you've now got to put the direction on. And magnetic fields go out of the north, into the south. And don't forget these ones, out of the north and into the south, out of the north and into the south. So that is the magnetic field of a solenoid. So to recap, this is the diagram of a solenoid. You can see the magnetic field comes out of the north and into the south and it's uniform in the centre. But will this now be strong enough to pick up paper clips? So is this strong enough to pick up our paper clips? Well, let's have a quick look. No, it clearly isn't. Although it made the magnet a lot stronger, it's still not strong enough to make it into an electromagnet which will be able to attract magnetic materials and maybe pick up things. So what I've done now is I've taken the solenoid here, which is a demo solenoid, and I made one of my own here, which is just a coil of wire. And you can see at the moment, I haven't got a current flowing through it because the compass is pointing north to south. Now I've got a current flowing through it. You can see the magnetic field is coming out of here. So that's the north and it'll go round and into the south on this side here. So you can see that. Now, is this strong enough to pick up paper clips? Well, again, the answer is no. Now, what we have to do is to put a magnetic material in the core. And what that does is remember, magnetic materials have domains. They're tiny little jump, like tiny little jumbled up magnets that are in here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this magnetic field to line up the domains here. And that will make this solenoid 
7,000 times stronger. And when that's the case, it should be able to pick up paper clips and it turns from being a solenoid into being called an electromagnet. So if we have an iron or steel core inside this coil of wire, there's no current flowing through that coil at the minute. The iron or steel core contains domains. Remember those little sort of magnets all jumbled up, so it has no overall magnetism. But what we can do is when we put a current through the solenoid, it creates its own magnetic field. And now you'll see that that magnetic field lines up all these domains in the same direction. And that increases the magnetism hugely to about 7,000 times stronger. And once that happens, once we've got the iron core inside, we call it an electromagnet because it should be able to pick up things. So is this now strong enough? Well, the answer is yes, and it can pick up paper clips. Now, of course, the strength of an electromagnet depends on a number of things. The first one is the amount of current because that will increase the magnetic field strength. So I'm going to reduce the current to about two amps and you can see that I can pick up a few of the paper clips, not all of them, but a few of them. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to increase the current to four amps and see how many paper clips I can now pick up. So now we've got four amps. Oh, you can see it is far, far stronger straight away. Another thing that affects the strength of the magnet is the number of coils in a certain area. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to see how many that picks up with four amps. And then we're going to, I'm going to take half of these coils off and see if it's weaker. So there's my four amps. Let's see how many it picks up. Oh, it quite easily picks up all of them. So with half the coils, let's have a look now. And it's not wanting to pick up half as many as it did with twice as many coils. And of course the other thing that changes the strength of the magnet is having an iron or a metallic material core in. Take that out and that will reduce the strength by about 7,000 times. So that turns back into a solenoid, not an electromagnet. So how can we investigate the strength of an electromagnet? Well, what I've got here is a homemade solenoid and of course I've got the iron core in the middle to make it about 7,000 times stronger. And I'm going to look at how current affects the strength of an electromagnet. So in order to test the strength, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use paper clips. And I'm going to hang the paper clip on the end of the electromagnet. Of course, there's no current flowing through it yet. And I'm going to keep adding weight to that paper clip to see how much weight it can carry. Now, of course, to make it a fair test, I've got to make sure that I use the same size paper clips each time. So I couldn't use that paper clip. I'd have to keep the size the same. So that is about one amp. So if I see if it holds one paper clip, and it just does. So let me see if it holds two paper clips. Yes, it does. Right, three. No. Now I'm going to increase to two amps. So I know it holds two, so let's see if it will hold the three paper clips. So let's see if it holds four. Yes. What about five? Yep. Yeah. Six. Seven. Eight. Just. So eight paper clips. So that's one technique we can use to investigate the strength of an electromagnet. So to recap, pause the video again, have a go at sketching the magnetic field of a solenoid, remember to put the direction of the magnetic field on, and have a go at filling out these gaps. So direction of the solenoid is north to south, it spreads out here as it gets weaker, and you manage to make it uniform in the center. So a solenoid is a coil of wire that produces a uniform magnetic field. To increase the strength of the field, you can put a soft iron core inside the coil, increase the number of coils or turns, or increase the current passing through the wire. And when a solenoid has an iron core inside, it's known as an electromagnet. So let's now review our learning objectives. You should be able to state that current in a wire produces a magnetic field. You should be able to draw magnetic fields around a current coming wire in concentric circles getting further apart, and you should be able to work out the direction using the right hand grip rule. You should be able to state what a solenoid is. It's a coil of wire. 
you should be able to draw a magnetic field around a solenoid, including the direction coming out of the north and into the south. You should be able to state how to change a solenoid into an electromagnet by adding an iron or steel core. And you should be able to state the three ways of making an electromagnet stronger, greater number of turns, more current, and an iron core or steel core inside. In the next video, we're going to look at uses of electromagnets.